Today we are tackling the final and most challenging of the Factorio tutorials. This is of course level 5 called the Abandoned Rail Base. Looks like we're starting the level in a car this time. And here we are arriving at the base, which has been destroyed probably from biters. My engineer says, well, this doesn't look too good. And I would agree. I don't see any engineer corpses. So they must have escaped in time. Well, that's the silver lining, I suppose. Um, it looks like they are researching advanced technologies here. So we've got a steam engine set up over here. We've got solar panels up here, belts, mining. At least that was all established at some point in time. My engineer is saying, if I repair the base, I can continue their research. I will need to repair the rail infrastructure too. The local resource patches will run dry soon. So even more reason to repair the rail section here because we're gonna have to make sure it's established, I'm guessing, to these outposts that were destroyed at some point in time. So the objective for this level, repair the base and research automated rail transportation. Oh boy, where to begin? So we've got this uh, crash site here. Is it gonna give me any um, items in which to start with? Looks like that's all been taken from the previous engineer. Although once you are in um, free play, these things opening the inventory of these little items here do give you some things to work with. Um, so, okay, where to start? I've already got a couple materials on me. I've got some assemblers, which will come in handy. Um, I've got a little bit of iron. I've got a little bit of copper. So probably the first thing we want to do is get power up and running, which means, let's see, do I have, I don't have much. Okay, so let's build, I think, a couple pipes. We'll get that running. Are there some nearby trees I can mine? Because I don't want to mine the coal by hand, but as soon as we can get power up and running, we can start to get everything else working because I'd much rather start with electrical tech than have to go back to burner tech, if that makes any sense, since it's already been established. And we already have a lot of the materials that are electrical powered. Ooh, and what is this over here? A couple hidden boxes for us. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Um, definitely not a bad idea to explore your map a little bit because you might find some little treats like that that gave us um, some solid fuel and some defender capsules, which I'm gonna put in my inventory uh, toolbar there. And that way, should some biters come and I'm not pr quite prepared, I'll at least have those. Okay, so let's get some fuel in there. Oh, and that one already has a little bit of coal. I'm just gonna add a little bit more back in there. Okay, and now we can extend the pipe. We've already got water and we can see that is already beginning to work, which is fantastic. All right, so we just have to finish the pipage here. Um, I'm going to do an underground pipe there and there. We'll continue that, and now we have power, um, I think, right? Yes, we do. All right, so now we just have to repair the rest of this. Um, but I do wanna make sure we have the ability to fuel this stuff. So the first thing I wanna do is make a new miner. We already have a couple in our inventory here. Um, so this is mining coal. and uh, we have to extend the power poles. Um, I already have some small power poles in my inventory, but just like that, we've now restored power. Perfect, not too bad of a start. Um, also, I wanna build some repair packs so we can repair a couple of these things, but I'm gonna go ahead and extend the walls. Protecting power is probably a good idea because uh, fighters definitely target the higher pollution items and uh, steam power definitely falls within that category there. We'll repair these underground belts here, just like that. Awesome. So uh, let's see, we can build a couple more boilers, a couple more steam engines. I've got those repair packs now that will just slowly repair a couple things here and there. 
just like that. Oh, looks like they had a gate here. I probably don't need that. We can use it elsewhere. Okay, oh, and I also have um, some solar here. I don't have any solar in my inventory and the ability to make it right now, I don't have yet. So we'll worry about repairing solar later. But I'll put that there. Um, oh, that's a laser turret. Let's go ahead and save that. That will come in handy. And let's add in the uh, other steam engine there. And we need two more right here. We'll connect up power like that. There, they should all be powered now. Uh, steam engines right here. One and two. And, oh, looks like I'm missing one more. We'll cover in the rest of the walls here. Put in that last steam engine there. And power has been at least mostly restored. It looks like I have to add in the extra boiler here, some more pipage. Uh, looks like I have to craft a little bit more right there. Add in some inserters, which I'm actually going to do burner inserters because um, that way if I ever do lose power, uh, at, at least electricity, I have the burner inserter that can just continually restore itself. Um, and one more right there, perfect. And then there we go. And this boiler actually has uh, two inserters, so I'm gonna grab the electrical one there, and then we'll put the uh, underground pipe right back there. Oh, and I'm glad I checked. It looks like I'm missing one pipe there. Now we are fully up and running. Perfect, so um, we have tons of power capability right now. We're only getting a fraction of our max production, so that's really good. So now that we have power, we can worry about getting mining up and running. So. I've already got a little bit of coal, but of course we're gonna need more if we're gonna be doing any smelting, which uh, these are steel furnaces, which still do require coal. Eventually you can get electric furnaces, uh, but I think for now, let's go ahead and just kind of revamp what is already in place. We'll want to prioritize uh, iron very quickly here, or else we're gonna run out of the ability to uh, use any materials because we'll have to start mining it by hand, which I don't want to do. Let's see, so they have a mining patch over there, but um, I think what we're gonna do is tap into um, the iron that's already over here. So let's do right here and here. And we'll, oh gosh, we only have three more belts. Okay, we can build a couple more by hand though, thankfully. And then coal. We need some miners for coal. Thankfully, I haven't depleted all of my resources in my pocket quite yet, but um, I'm getting pretty close here. Um, okay, so coal there and there. That will cover um, the coal. Oh, crap. Nope, we don't want to mine the stone. Be careful, you guys, when you have um, patches of ore so near each other because you can accidentally have it um, mine both materials. And that's not a problem if you have the ability to split it. Um, but this early on when I'm very poor and when I'm trying to be semi-quick uh, because of the possibility of attack, I want to just um, not worry about splitting it off and I just wanna have pure coal and not worry about it. Okay, it looks like they did have a splitter there eventually with coal going over there for so. Oh, I think to power um, the train. Um, but there's coal going in now, it looks like the original engineers here had a full line of just coal, which is fine. Um, so there's coal. As far as iron, what we can do is, because I'm assuming this was an iron line and I can tell, well, I suppose it could have been copper, but we need it to be iron. So we will underground here to there and go down this way, and then we'll connect up the uh, lines once I get a little bit more crafted. Let's add in power poles. Now we're gonna go back to using the small ones since I'm out of the um, medium power poles. But at least there is the iron automated, or um, mining automated. And there we go. 
so um, we do have a couple smelters. At least this one works. Um, we do have to restore power here as well though. Not a huge deal, but uh, let's see. I probably should have saved my, um, let's actually <laughs> uh, restore these power poles uh, to somewhere else where we need the coverage. We can always do the smaller power poles here. So like that, like that and that. And we'll do there and there, 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 there. Okay, perfect. So we've powered the train stuff. Now we're making a little bit of iron now. We'll just extend the belt lines. We'll wanna get automation of iron type of resources pronto. And what did they have going here? Okay, so they had some assemblers, they had some, ooh, yeah. So basically crafting was occurring here. Um, let's see, so how many smelters do they have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then uh, maybe we can extend that to 12 or so. But uh, let's extend our new uh, line here. And I'll borrow a little bit of these red underground belts. It's fine to mix and match this early on. We'll suck up a little bit of the iron plate. And thank goodness we now have that at least semi-automated. Um, we'll replenish the power poles here so that we have some um, more iron production. We need a power pole there and there and there. Okay, and of course now we need inserters. Oh, I do have a couple yellow and red. Okay, that's good. I'm just gonna replace these. And, oh, I am missing some power uh, there to uh, join that up. Okay, perfect. So we've got a little bit more iron plate production than we had before, that's good. Uh, we need some outputs. We also need the furnaces themselves. And do I have any? I don't. Okay, so it'll probably be a while before I can actually make any more furnaces, but um, a couple of these will just have to be in disrepair for now. But we can finish adding in the inserters here. Perfect. And here, here. Here, 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 and here. Okay, um, so one thing we need to do, do I have a splitter or the ability to make a splitter? I do, okay. So we need to add in some iron ore onto this line as well that I'm traveling on because um, these inserters cannot quite reach the iron that's above there, although they can reach the shared coal line. So by splitting it, we can at least guarantee that they can join up. So actually, let's move that down. Let's move that there. And I need a couple more belts. I'd like one more splitter, please. Like that. And like that. All right. It's not perfect, but it's functional. And that's all I'm really caring about this early in the game. We could join up our iron products like that and make a little bus that extends that way if we'd like. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna worry about um, kind of sucking up the resources and continuing to make a couple things in my pocket. Uh, although some automation of belts and inserters would be really, really nice. Um, maybe we should do that. Um, I do have to worry about mining of copper plate. I do have a couple assemblers, but I don't have any more miners. So I'm gonna make a couple of miners just so I can tap into this copper patch here, just so I can get that started. Uh, meanwhile, let's protect these guys and repair them, just in case we do get any biter attacks. Um, if we do, I imagine they'd come from, ooh, probably down here or up there. Uh, we'll see whichever uh, patch gets the pollution reaching there first. Oh yay, it's so good to see iron accumulating again. 
of, ooh, and I do have a little bit of copper plate. I suppose I have 97 on me. Um, but let's go ahead now and, ooh, actually, what I could do is make this a copper line. In fact, maybe that's what I should do. Um, we'll do that in a minute. I think, um, let's put the miners here. I'm just thinking, um, instead of having two of these be for um, iron plate on each side, we'll have one of them be copper. Uh, just because I don't really have the ability to make um, the upgraded smelters at this point. So it just seems to make more sense that I would use the current ones and just divvy up the resources a little bit differently than I had originally planned. Uh, that can get deleted to make more room. We'll extend this. We can delete that. And I just need a couple more belts. And in just a minute, we'll go ahead and automate belts. But for now, let me uh, repurpose those. And that way, uh, the iron plate is only getting produced on this top half of the smelters. We'll suck up these resources here, kind of clear out the inventory, so to speak. And then an inserter will go there. We'll pick up the iron that was on the ground. That way, there's no mixing of any of the uh, copper and the iron resources onto that line. All right, so the last thing this section needs for mining is power. Oh, I'm getting stuck. And there we go. Power done. Um, and like the engineer said at the very beginning, these will definitely not be enough resources to keep our base up and running uh, for very long. So expanding will need to be a priority. To do that, we will have to get the trains up and running eventually. And we're actually probably not too far off from doing that. Uh, the first things we'll wanna do is uh, take advantage of the current mining that we have available to us, um, get automation of our basic resources, um, including like production items like belts, the rails, inserters, um, assemblers, miners, things like that. Now we have the joining of our resources here. Um, we can use this as kind of our tiny little bus for now. Uh, what do I want to do with it? First things first, let's do uh, the uh, iron gear wheels. Just like that, let's get some power to them. So iron gear wheels will be useful going into uh, the transport belts, which we will add another inserter there, another inserter there. And then we do need a red inserter because um, the great thing about transport belts is you also end up needing them in green science. So um, basically we'll just have it go into a green science setup and then the excess will get used for um, the belts just for production around the base. So let's add in some power like so, put in the recipe. There we have it. There is uh, transport belts made. And actually I wanna change the direction that they're outputting because I, I wanna keep the middle as a little bit of a bus area. So I want the output to go here to the top instead. And we'll have the output go in this direction. And I think we'll use a box here, and I've learned this trick thanks to JD Place, um, but that way the excess will get stored here. So let's do four stacks for now, like that. Perfect. All right, next thing, good item to automate would be inserters, but that also means we need automation of green circuits. Uh, so let's do, let's see. Couple more assemblers we can do. Um, green circuits here. We'll just do a very early primitive setup just to get us going. These will be the um, copper wire assemblers. And then uh, let's grab a splitter here because we do need um, iron plate to go into the um, green circuit assemblers. So we'll make a couple more of those. That will go to 
the other end. We'll have this kind of loop around actually. We could have that go like that. This um, insert needs to go over a tile like so. We'll move these assemblers down actually like that. And then that way the iron plate can travel through the middle. I've just added in a little bit of a snaking with the uh, copper and iron plates here because I do intend for this to go underground. And then that way the inserters can pull from it. Ooh, can I, let's actually move that over a tile like that. That can stay there. That, ooh, I don't quite have the room. I can make um, two uh, of the red underground belts though by hand though. So I will wait for that to be upgraded to a red underground belt, but that way we can have the iron plate swing through here. And then as far as the output goes, ooh, it looks like I have to delete this. Or no, I don't. We can have the output to go on here and then we can have it snake around somewhere or something like that. Okay, let's make a couple more power poles. Okay, finally I can make this a red underground belt there so that way these two machines have a way of getting the iron fed into them. And then we'll have inserters spit out the green circuits onto these lines there. So let's go ahead and put in the recipes. And we need some more power like so. Perfect. We're making some progress. And we need a couple more inserters. But there we go. Green circuits are now automated. And then we can continue this line. Not that we really have the resources to keep up with it, but for now, I'm just going to be snaking the green circuits uh, to where I need them, which is over here for now. So uh, let's make a couple more. Actually, I don't need to make more belts by hand. Yay! Belts have been automated, good. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So this can be a very primitive, very early game setup that keeps the base running. Uh, so now I do want to automate those inserters after all, let's add in um, another assembler. Although I do need, I think, some more um, iron gear wheels. And then we could have the iron gear wheels do a long-handed output over here. One thing that underground belts take a lot of are the iron gear wheels. So I wanna have even more production of those. We'll make a couple more power poles. Make a couple more inserters by hand, but it won't be too much longer for that. There we go. Those are done. And I think just for good measure, Let's do one more. All right, iron gear wheels look beefy enough to me. Let's extend our mini bus over here. We'll extend the iron gear wheels down here along with the belts. We'll add in another assembler. Oh, am I out? Looks like, and I can't make any more. Um, I just need to suck up a little bit more iron, it looks like. We'll do that. Suck up our resources. There we go. Make a couple more assemblers by hand, but we'll automate that here very soon as well. So inserters, to remind myself, the recipe takes one iron plate, one iron gear wheel, and one electric circuit. Okay, so we'll grab the iron gear wheels from there. We'll grab the iron plate from here, and then we'll do a long-handed inserter just like that. Perfect, so that will make the yellow inserters. We'll need some power. and then we can have them output onto the same line as the belts actually. And perfectly, they're able to go on that line there. So now we can continue our little bus here. So I've got the two shared items that need to go into green science. Unfortunately, I'm running out of room over here due to the lake nearby. So I'm gonna snake our production, I think down here towards the bottom, like that. Should be just fine. And it's totally fine if you have to wrap it around. It doesn't have to be a straight line by any means. 
Um, and then the next thing I want to do, let's make some uh, long-handed inserters, which um, we'll take directly from the belts that we just made. And I'm gonna suck those up for more resources on hand there. Perfect. Okay, so this is gonna be long-handed. We'll continue the bus even further. We need iron plate and iron gear wheels, so that means we need another um, long-handed inserter there and a regular inserter there. And then of course, adding more power. And then we do need an output box for these guys. Um, I think what I will do is, can we move this power pole? Yes, we can. I'll move that power pole there. We'll do an output box just right there. And we'll cap that off at, um, let's do 50 for now. Um, we can also automate the fast inserters now if we want to, which um, really isn't any trouble because we already have the resources nearby. Uh, we'll just add in one more assembler. Oh crap, I'd have to make a couple more by hand. Right next to the one we did for the red inserters. There we go. Copy the same inserter output idea. We'll do another box nearby. So let's put in the recipe. Let's continue this a little bit further. We'll have to start curving it though, but we can do that and that. And now we have our three beginner inserters automated. That's perfect. We are coming along. How are we with pollution? Ooh. Okay. So we do have to worry about biters here. Um, Oh, and let's actually continue this line along. We're only using a portion of our smelters for copper. Um, defense will need to be a priority. So we should have some ammo production at some point as well. Um, earlier, probably the better. Uh, but I would like to automate some underground belts and splitters just to get uh, kind of going. So let's see, we can extend this down there. Uh, we can do underground there to there for our iron gear wheels. And then underground belts take just iron plate and transport belts. So what we'll do is curve our assembler around like that. That's what we'll do. And then actually, can I make a radar? Let's do that. Let's grab some resources. I'm just thinking we'll need something to go in that space there. Uh, we will begin to curve like this. And actually, let me move these inserters around. So the red one will go there. The yellow one will go there. Ooh, and I am running so low on iron plate already. And lights for that matter. There we go. Now we can see much better. Okay. And how is power doing? Power is great. I'm glad we got that kind of started earlier on. So let's see, can I move this down just a touch to make just a touch more room? Yes, I can. So I'm gonna delete these. We'll move them over just by a tile. And that way I have a little bit more room for the assembler that I wanna fit in here and still be able to reach the resources it needs. So um, let's delete it. And then also, um, if you guys want to do a little trick to be able to copy resources that are already on the map and uh, ghost them down, you can do that. Um, I have it bound to a left thumb button for me on my uh, mouse, but um, just look up your guys' controls to see what you have to do to select the item you're hovering over and then copy it down. And uh, if you have the item in your inventory, it will not be ghosted, it'll actually be placed, which is really convenient for quickly placing items instead of looking in your inventory for them all the time. Okay, so we need that to go there. And this is again, the yellow underground belts, perfect. Okay, so let's extend this down like that. And that way we're doing the curve in our bus perfectly. 
Uh, we do need iron plate. Not that I really have much getting through to this point. It's all getting <laughs> used up in other spots. Um, ooh, yeah, it's not even really making it to the point of feeding these inserters here. This is uh, not the most efficient setup, but it is at least something to get us up and running, which is what matters this early game. Uh, so iron plate, we'll get here eventually, but we do need to worry about a little output. I'm going to output into a box and then we'll also have it direct insert into another assembler that will make the fast underground belts or the red underground belts, just like this. And then we can make another box here and again, cap those, copy the condition, and that way they are both capped at one stack there. We do need some power like that. And then we'll keep continuing our bus line down further here. Um, okay, so these guys also need some iron gear wheels, which are all the way up here. We'll make a couple by hand. And let's see, ooh, is there anything I can do to help my iron ore situation? Can I make a couple more miners? I can, it looks like. And we'll add more belts to join up with them. Like that, we'll add in a splitter. Ooh, I can't afford a splitter. We'll just have it connect up like that. But that will hopefully help a little bit. Okay, so we're getting the basics done, but the question is now, how do I get iron gear wheels all the way over to these assemblers here that need them? Um, I think let's start by putting an underground there and crap. I've kind of boxed myself in, which is not unlike me. I think I'm gonna switch the outputs a little bit. So we'll have um, these inserters putting it into a box here and just having undergrounds go around the box or under the box rather. We'll do the same over here. I need, oop. I've accidentally got some, is it stone on the belt? Is that what I just saw? I'm not sure. I don't think so, I think we're okay. And why aren't the, oh, I do have some stone. Somehow some stone is getting clogged in here. That was like the number one rule I told you guys very early on. And I think that, yep, this guy that I just deleted is the culprit. Can we move that over? Yes, okay, so just by moving these over a little tile, I was able to get them switched. And you can see if it's able to mine up the additional resource of the stone, for example, by hovering over the miner, the expected resources over here on the right side, and you can see that it's only showing iron ore there now, so that's good. Um, okay, so now I shouldn't have as much cloggage going on there, which is good. Um, hopefully a little bit more iron will make its way down here eventually. Um, and I do need some iron even just to have in my pocket actually. So we'll go up here, soak some of it up, and I've got a, a little bit in my inventory, 51. We'll soak a little bit more down there. Okay. So we're gonna extend the lines, what we'll do is like that. Actually, can I be even cheaper and use a yellow underground? I can. That way it's a little bit less expensive for me to use. So we'll do the underground belts just like that. Add in more power. And then um, we'll move that long headed inserter that I deleted for the direct insertion from the yellow underground into the red underground belt. And that'll be just fine. Later on, if I want to extend the um, iron gear wheels even further, I can move this assembler down a tile and just add in another underground belt to carry on the iron gear wheels. But for now, this is just fine. Let's um, go ahead and put that cap back in. Uh, ooh, we also need to fix this, put uh, the box back there. We'll copy the condition. And there we go. Underground belts are slowly gonna be getting up and running once we can get some more iron plate down here. 
So we've got the bare essentials automated. We've got iron gear wheels. We've got uh, three inserter types. We've got two underground types. Um, splitters would be nice to also have automated, which um, I think, uh, let's see, splitters also do require, they don't require, oh, the red ones do. The red ones require underground belts. So I think we'll do what I just said we could do, which is um, extend the underground belts like so, and that way we can keep feeding it like that. This is again, whoops, wrong recipe, the red underground belt. We can keep the same insert here for the output box. Um, and we can actually move the red um, long-headed inserter. It can still reach from this machine to this one. And then now we'll add in another machine, although I don't have it automated, so I have to craft it in my pocket. Uh, this machine will pick up uh, iron gear wheels. We'll make a couple more. Actually, let's, can we do yellow? Let's stick with yellow if we can, because it is cheaper. There to there, and that will carry on there. We'll do our assembler here. This will be yellow splitter. Continue the bus like that. We can put the output in the middle like that and a little box. And we'll copy that condition from the box up here to this box there. You can see it's equal. We'll extend power. Is everything at least planning to get what it needs? It looks like it. Okay, so we do need a long headed inserter to also pick up the green circuits. And then we'll need an inserter to pick up the transport pelts. And then we'll need an inserter to pick up the iron plate. Uh, oh, and this one actually does not need iron gear wheels. So we can move that machine up just to make a little bit more room. We'll just change the inserter that's picking up the output like that, or the input of the belt like that. There we go. All right, eventually when we get iron plate, it'll make its way down here. So the last one that we have to worry about are the uh, red splitters. So I will make one more underground in my pocket here. We'll just have the um, iron gear wheel section uh, line there just end right there. I don't know that we'll have to have it continue on for too much further, although it would be nice for continuing automation for other things too, I suppose. Um, so let's just be on the safe side. Let's plan on it continuing just in case, which just means we can't keep our assemblers as dense as I normally would like it. So that will continue that way. Uh, this will become the red recipe. So we'll take iron gear wheels, green circuits, which will need a red uh, inserter. And it looks like I am getting attacked, oh no. And I've lost power. I knew I should have worried about military much sooner than I have. Crap. This happens every time too. Oh no, okay. Thankfully I have a lot of belts on me, but they did destroy some of my power poles. Okay, well there's power restored. Whoops. Let's uh, grab that repair pack. We'll wanna get a turret over here with some ammo as soon as I get a chance, which knowing me, I always prioritize other things before military. So don't be like me. Prioritize your military before it's too late. Um, which reminds me, we can go ahead and place down that um, radar machine since we have room right there to do so. Uh, Let's see, and I'm gonna grab the inserters that we have already produced on hand here and here. Okay, so red inserter there. We'll need some more power. Like that. We've got iron gear wheels, check. We've got green circuits, and then we're just missing one more long-handed inserter in between these two machines there. And then, great. We're making some progress. Uh, let's just put some uh, box over here for um, the output. I don't have 
any underground belts made yet in my boxes because iron is so limited in its supply right now. But we'll get there. So we'll make a couple more underground belts by hand. All right, but I think a lot of the bare essentials are getting made. Uh, there's a couple more things that will come in handy. Like we'll want to make um, automation of miners and assemblers for sure, as well as some pipe would be nice. Uh, and then automation of furnaces. And then of course, we still have to worry about getting science automated. We already have the materials needed for green science. We haven't even begun to touch on red science though, which I know is a little bit backwards. Usually you do red science first. Uh, but I focused on the products for green science first because those are also conveniently the materials I need for building. So if we wanted to do um, green science, what could we do? We could just have it uh, start hereabouts and extend copper via a splitter. Uh, if I had room to really go, we could have it go underground. Let's see. I'm gonna do an underground trick like that, I think. Make a couple more underground belts. Okay, and then that way, so this copper line is underground um, over here. And then I know this will take the iron plate with it once the iron plate is actually making its way over here. Uh, but there we go. So we can actually move this up like that. Oh, no, we'll move this down. Okay, there we go. That will cover, um, we need one iron green wheel machine. Oh crap, I'm getting attacked again. Oh no, okay. They keep attacking my power poles. Oh, and you can see there's a couple more coming in. Ooh, that's where they're coming this time. Let's go. Repair that. Okay, walls and turrets. Those will become important here in just a minute because the base is growing much more rapidly than I'm able to defend it. But we were worried about science. So this will be, I guess, red and then we'll do green underneath it. So for red, we do need uh, one thing for iron gear wheels right here. We won't steal from that line there. We'll do its own separate line like that. And um, I know just off the top of my head that uh, five assemblers is the good ratio for that um, to keep it kind of up and running without wasting resources. Gosh, I really have to increase iron. Let's just do two for now though, because I am so iron poor that um, I really can't afford more than that. But we'll do outputs just like this there. We'll do power here, here, and here. Um, we'll do an inserter there. And then we'll continue this on and continue that on because we'll need the uh, red inserters to pull the iron gear wheels from that line there. And then we'll need a yellow inserter to pull uh, for the copper plate, just like that. Okay, we'll extend the power here and here. And then we technically have some sort of red science up and running. Uh, last thing we need to do will be the green science. So. Eventually I'll have six of these machines, but I think what we could do is just wrap this around like that. And I know this is a little bit weird, but we'll extend that down and then insert her there. Actually, we can have that be yellow and uh, yellow transport belts we'll give it power just like that. So now we also technically have green science up and running, albeit not very efficiently and not with the correct ratios, but then we can extend science over here somewhere, I think. In fact, um, let's start that now. We'll put that there 
I just wanna make sure we have plenty of room for more science. We'll continue this belt line down and then we can just have more labs there that pull from the science packs there. It took us uh, quite a while to get science up and running, but I'd rather do the bare essentials first. And then that means we can start research at any given time, I think, um, railway, because that's the objective. Uh, let's do that first. Because don't forget, our objective is to repair the base and research automated rail transportation, which is what we just started. But we're getting to the point where we need to now worry about increasing iron production coming in. This little bit that I have here is just not cutting it for me. So um, once the railway is done researching, we will eventually get oh um, some rails. But I think for now we have to kind of shunt some of our resources. Um, let's see, where are the bulk of my iron plate going to for now? And let's see, can I make some more smelters? Let's actually use some of these current um, stone furnaces that I have on hand, or at least that I can make. So we'll do stone furnaces in these areas just to help kind of supplement a little bit. There, we'll make a couple more here and there. We'll continue the lines a little bit too. Let's see, is there any way I can add more to the iron production? Um, I'm out of uh, electric miners and I really don't have a lot of resources to make more of them right now. So I'm gonna actually do what I didn't want to do, which is to make some burner miners. And I can always feed them by coal, at least to get more iron uh, plate production up and running, at least early on. Uh, we've got a little bit of fuel here but that'll help a little bit. And then we can get some automation of some walls, but we'll need some uh, more coal. So I think we can add in just a couple more furnaces hereabouts to make kind of a tiny little smelting section. Like that. We'll do just a few uh, smelters right here like that. Okay, perfect. We'll add in our inserters. Make some more power poles. We'll add our output inserters over here. A Little bit more power. And then we do need an output line. Uh, oh, and an inserter here too, it looks like. Right there. Okay, so output line will have it go in this direction. I don't think we'll need too much uh, stone brick, but it will basically um, convert the stone ore into stone brick and we can use that to make walls. So uh, let's grab, do we have any more assemblers? We don't, and that's because we're missing iron, which is the story of my factorial life. All right, I was able to soak up just a little bit more iron plate. We'll make um, a couple assemblers. We'll do this one here to make walls. And we'll output, whoops just like that into a little box. For now, let's add a couple more miners for mining some stone. Like that. We'll have to reconnect power since I broke it. There we go. All right, we don't have too bad of a little base up and running. Uh, my biggest concern right now is lack of iron plate, which means we're definitely gonna have to get this railway researched as soon as possible. Uh, so that we can go ahead and make some rails that will extend to get into this uh, little iron ore mining over there. Um, one thing I am debating doing though, because I am so poor, is to actually rip up the current rails that are over here that feed into the uh, copper patch over there. Since we have plenty of copper for now, uh, that won't always be the case, 
but definitely if there's one that I prioritize over the other, iron is it. So don't be afraid to mine up resources or um, materials and reallocate them to other places. That's what I'm definitely gonna be doing. Kind of a little bit of a sneaky way to get around waiting for the railway automation to get done. As you can see in my inventory, I did mine up quite a few of those rails that were headed down to the copper line. So let's go ahead and start at our current train station drop up point that we know is for iron, which is this one here. Uh, we also know it's gonna be for iron because that's currently uh, the line that has the iron ore going on it. So we wanna keep like with like. So to make the train uh, rails here, I'm just going to uh, grab it from my inventory and then we're gonna hover over an existing piece, which is this one here where we have a train stop. And then you'll see it turns blue if there's an uh, area of existing track already placed, but green means we can go ahead and just left mouse click and place it over the um, planned area. So we'll just follow this track all the way along here. There's a lot of it that already is placed. So hopefully I have way more than I need because I did mine up like all of the area that was going to the copper section. Uh, so that way we can replace some of it. And we're actually, ooh, almost there. And thankfully I have a little bit of ammo on me. Um, but as soon as we get iron ore more plentiful, we'll definitely uh, worry about militarization, you know, some ammo and turrets and uh, things like that too. Almost to the iron patch, which we'll also have to worry about defending. Uh, let's see, grab more rails. I only have 61 left on me. Hopefully it's enough to get through. Oh, it will be. We'll have plenty. There we go. It's all filled in. We can tell because the line now looks complete. Uh, we do have to power it though. And now that I'm here, I definitely also want to protect it. So I'm just gonna make a little bit of a wall line here, just around the really vulnerable areas because I have uh, biters kind of diagonally on either side of me. And that is all of the walls that I had on me. Um, but we'll make our way back to base because um, we will have to extend power I have to do it via these tiny little power poles because I don't have any other power poles research yet. I'm still working on railway. I'm maybe about a third of the way done as it is, which isn't great. And that's all because of a lack of iron plate. But I will slowly make my way back to base with these tiny little poles. I'll get there eventually. Uh-oh, I'm headed back to base, but it looks like I'm under attack again. Okay, hurry quickly. Oh no, they're taking out all of my coal. That's not good. Oh my gosh, that's a huge nest or a huge group of them. Oh no, they're gonna take out all of my miners. No. Thankfully I have like just the right amount of ammo. Oh my gosh. That was horrible timing for that to happen. I was not even here really. Okay. Um, crap. Uh, let's get power up and running pronto. I have just one miner and I don't have the iron plate to make more. So I am in a pretty vulnerable situation right now. Thankfully I have just enough iron to make a pump here, but I don't have enough iron to make another underground pipe which is really unfortunate. Um, I think we can live off of just the power from this section of the boilers and steam engines there, but let me restore power. And then I think we'll be in business. Um, at least we have this area now powered. And to double check that, you can just uh, click on the electrical network up here to the um, top right near your mini map. And you can see that this blue line indicates that we are all connected with power. Um, I wish I had um, a radar machine over there, but I don't. Uh, let's get some fuel into that guy. Uh, crap. 
and I'm getting blinking telling me that we're running low on power. I know, I know. We only have half of my engines up and running because of water. I'm kind of just gonna have to wait to get a little bit more iron plate, it looks like, um, because I can't make any more pipes, including regular or underground. Ooh, how am I doing on walls though? Not so bad on the walls. Uh, iron though, I'm gonna steal from anywhere that I can get my hands on it. Like so. And that way I can at least make some underground pipes to feed this water over here. Um, we'll also take some of the walls that are produced over here and we're gonna see if we can wall off part of our area. In fact, let's do, do I have any more assemblers? Let's do one more assembler for some wall production. Just like that. All right guys, I'm getting a little bit desperate. It occurred to me, even though we have the rails connected now to that iron patch, I don't have a train, nor the ability to make one, even if it were researched. And research is going so slowly because of my lack of iron. So I'm getting a little desperate here, um, but I have found on the map that there is a little blue dot out here which we're gonna go investigate. Maybe it's a little box surprise of some goodies. Maybe it'll be a train. Who knows, but I'm gonna go find out. <gasps> there it is. I see it, you guys see it? Ooh, and it's not a train, but it is some power stuff. It looks like some uh, accumulators. Aw, you know game, would have been much better if it were a train. Sneaky little box up there too. I'll be headed there. All right, made it to this box and it contains uh, solid fuel and green circuits. Not the train I was hoping for, um, but we do now have some accumulators which will come in handy for this tiny little solar panel array thing over here. I don't yet have the ability to make these solar panels themselves, but um, I can add in at least a couple accumulators to make the current ones a little bit more useful. Uh, so I can't quite remember the ratio off the top of my head. I think it's like 21 accumulators per 25 uh, solar panels to equal the optimal ratio for um, solar panel energy production. But we're just gonna go with what we have. And how's our wall production? We've got 54 more in there. So now I have 135 total. I'm gonna see if I can just protect myself a little bit better by walling myself over here like this. And it would be nice actually to extend this the whole way. We do have a little bit of a, a narrower spot here, but I guess we could stop here at this uh, lake and just kind of switch directions a little bit. So once we get more walls, we'll extend it in so that way we're at least kind of boxed in from this top left section. And I said that and I put those walls down just in time. Oh my gosh, I'm having to kill everything by hand. Uh-oh, this is not looking good. I only have like eight more ammo on me. Ugh. Wow, and they destroyed some of my rail. Oh boy, this is not looking good. I'm gonna grab this laser turret that's doing nothing over here. In fact, it's killed nothing. And we'll move it over here where we've been getting attacked. That way I at least have some sort of defense besides my two firearm magazines that I have left in my inventory. Oh no, now it's coming from the bottom. I just can't get ahead. I think part of my problem is the iron plate, the very limited amount that I do have is getting used up with the iron gear wheels that are feeding it into the resources for my underground belts and splitters over here. So what I'm gonna do, since we have plenty of iron gear wheel production over here and very little over here, is steal some of it, which I hate to do something like this, but it's kind of, I think, necessary at this point. So um, we'll do an underground belt like that. Do I have just enough room? No, I don't. Um, so what we can do, extend that underground belt further, push that one further back, and now I have enough room. There we go. 
That'll help my cause a little bit, at least, with speeding up the railway research. My railway research is much quicker now that I have shunted a lot of those iron gear wheels from this inserter over here. Uh, so now I think I'm gonna actually focus on making gun charts automated. So to do that, I'm just gonna extend the underground belt line there again. I do need some more resources though for the assemblers, which I still have yet to automate, I know. Uh, it is on my to-do list. We'll allow that underground belt to carry on if needed for other production of items. Um, in the meantime, let's add in the recipe. And this requires iron copper plate and then some iron gear wheels. So we'll have all of those conveniently nearby with this extension of the bus there. Uh, we'll have the insert go there. And then we need an output box, which we can put like this and right there. So eventually when we can get the iron plate extending down the bus here, we will have some production of turrets. Ooh, railway is just now finished with research as well. So let's see what that gave us. Um, it did unlock the ability to produce the rails, which I already kind of stole, um, and the ability to make the locomotive, which is what I really care about. So the locomotive is gonna be expensive. It does require steel, which I have yet to get up and running. Um, and then of course, engines. So those are also all gonna take some iron plate. So I almost wish the game would throw me a little bit of a bone here, but for steel production, I think what we're gonna do is, let's see, is there any way to get more iron ore? We have this little bit here that's really not worth it. Um, what's over there? I wonder if that's another little box or something. Um, we do have iron ore over there, but that's too far to bus it via belt. So I think what I'm gonna do is end up stealing some of the iron plate over here to make some uh, steel furnaces, which is not my first choice, that's for sure. Um, but let's grab some building resources over here. I'm gonna grab a couple um, underground belts. We'll grab a couple splitters. I only have 12 on hand anyway. And we're gonna split off the iron like that. And then I think we'll have an iron smelter go like this. We'll have it um, join up with some more coal which uh, I can borrow by doing another splitter right here. There we go. And this actually also reminds me we'll have iron and coal nearby, which means we can use that to make grenades. Do I have those researched yet? Of course not. Um, so military too, let's go ahead and do that. That's pretty inexpensive um, compared to what we re just got done researching. So let's actually join up the products like that. It'll be a pretty mediocre furnace setup, but I just need to get the bare essentials just to afford two locomotives and then I will be good to go. Um, okay, so furnaces, I do have a couple on hand. Um, we'll just do a very basic setup like that and then we'll have the outputs Actually, let's have the outputs go the other way. Outputs go to the bottom, like that. And then all we have to do, duplicate it, make a couple more furnaces as well. And there we go. Ooh, and military too just got done. So we should be able to make some upgraded ammo, not that I even have regular ammo produced yet, um, but we could also make grenades by extending this line here. Uh, now let's extend the power and there we go. We will start to produce steel. Because I already have iron gear wheels nearby, I think I'm going to um, have my little engine build over here. And I also have the iron plate over here as well. So it's kind of a convenient spot to put the engine build. So uh, for my little build, what I wanna do, I need some, uh, pipe getting produced, which I can fit over here if I make more room. 
like that. So we can have pipe like so. And then it would be nice to also have a little output box. So we can do underground like that and put a little box there in the middle. That way the excess goes there. Uh, so that covers a little pipe build. The other things engines need are a steel plate and iron gear wheels, which is all conveniently right here. So uh, we'll do pipe there. And let's see, it would be nice to uh, maybe join this up with pipe as well. So I'm gonna change this inserter to a filter inserter so we can actually have the iron gear wheels and the pipes share a line. That means we only want this to pull iron gear wheels from there. Okay, so we'll have, uh, let's see, how do I wanna join up the pipeline? Okay, so that's how I'm gonna join up the pipe and the iron gear wheels, and then we'll have it loop back like that. And then that will go there. Okay, so um, that means within this little bit of tiles here, I have pipe, I have iron gear wheels, and I do have the steel. So we'll just make a couple more assemblers. And then we'll put in a recipe for engines, just like that. So red inserter will go here. We'll do a yellow inserter here, and then an output up there at the top for the engines. We'll give it power, and there we go. First little bit of engine production. Now we just have to wait because a locomotive requires 20 engines to be exact. Um, so that will take some time. While we wait for the engines to finish getting automated, let's extend our tiny little bus down a little bit further and finally automate the assemblers, which I need to grab a little bit more iron from somewhere so I can make another assembler to do that. We'll just steal from here, steal from everywhere. Gosh, I look forward to the day where we have a train that will amp up the iron ore mining. All right, assembler down. Let's add in the inserter. We'll add another inserter here. looks like we also need more belt, which I'm borrowing from there. We have plenty of inserters on us though. And this will automate uh, regular assembler ones for us. We do need a long-handed inserter though to pick up the green circuits. And then some power, of course. And there we have it. Assemblers, finally automated. All right, looks like we have a ton of engines stored up now. I'm gonna suck those up. How many do we have on us? Let's see, so that gave me 28. So we could technically make one locomotive now. So let's suck up the rest of the steel. We'll let those uh, continue working so that we can make one more locomotive, at least for right now. Uh, and we'll do the locomotive there just in my pocket. We'll also need to make a cargo wagon, which is just gonna require, of course, more iron, steel and iron gear wheels. So let's steal those. And then we'll be looking much healthier, hopefully for our iron supply. Uh, so train goes here just at the uh, train station here. And uh, I know that I can tell just at least from my experience that this is going to be a double headed train, meaning that there's gonna be one train headed um, in one direction and the other locomotive at the end is gonna be in the other direction. And I'll show you that in just a second once I can get some more resources to finish building both the cargo wagon and the other locomotive that we'll need to finish off the entire train. All right, the last cargo wagon and locomotive built. Now all we have to do is attach it to the rest of the train setup. So to do that, you can see that a little bit of a green extension line between the cargo wagons is placed there. So you know that they will connect. So I'm extending that there. And then this time for the caboose of the train, I'm gonna be having another locomotive, but this time I'm gonna press the R button, which is rotate. So, whoops. <laughs> that way we can have it go in one direction. Meanwhile, this locomotive is going in the opposite direction. And that way, this single train can go in both directions, but on the same track. 
So if you guys are unfamiliar with how to play with trains, I'd recommend checking out my train uh, basics tutorial, which uh, can be hopefully pretty helpful um, with explaining some of the train basics. Uh, let's see, it does need some fuel though. And I think uh, let's actually give it some solid fuel for now. Uh, we'll put that in there and then we'll put another 50 solid fuel in this train. Oh, looks like it's already got coal, never mind. Uh, it's now good to go. Uh, okay, I think uh, last thing we need to do, this is already called iron ore processing for my train station. That's good to know, I actually didn't know that, uh, but that would have been helpful early on if there was any doubt. And then this train station over here is called iron ore mine. Okay, so now we just have to set in the train condition. So I'm gonna have it go from iron ore processing to the iron ore mine. So iron ore processing, we're gonna have it wait until um, empty cargo. So once the cargo is empty, it'll go back to the iron ore mine. And the iron ore mine, we're gonna have it wait for full cargo inventory or five seconds of inactivity. That way, if it's taking too long to get full, it'll, and it's more than five seconds, it'll just come back here to deliver what it already has in its inventory. So I'm gonna hop in to make sure it gets to exactly where it needs to go and that we have everything we need. Actually, let's come with a little bit of iron just so I can make a radar over there. But we'll hop in, go to the iron ore mine by clicking the little play button thing over here and you can see we're traveling now. And this will start essentially phase two of this base or this tutorial I would imagine because now we do have train automation, which is perfect. Uh, now we just have to make sure this is working properly. I will wanna get some more walls up here because like I said, there's that biter base nearby and this one also nearby. Lots of things that are scary nearby and I still don't even have proper ammo production. It's loading pretty slowly. So one thing I can do is uh, go underground like this with my belts here and then we'll have it uh, load like this. And I don't have quite enough room for boxes as it's currently set up. I mean, I can definitely expand my walls. Um, but for right now, just feeding directly from my belts into the train without necessarily going into boxes is just fine. And then we'll do the same thing over here on this side. So my train isn't full yet, but this is far more iron ore than I think I've had in a long time. So I'm gonna head back early to the iron ore processing section of the base. We'll unload what we already have and then we'll come back with more walls and more materials to better defend the little iron ore mining outpost. And once we can get a much healthier supply of iron plate, we can go ahead and do the next section of our research, which is the actual automated rail transportation portion of our objective, which is this bit of research right here. So this is actually fairly inexpensive, only 75 of red and green science, but I wanna wait to make sure iron is as healthy as possible before we go ahead and do that. Let's also grab some more walls that we have here. Wow, and I haven't seen a fully compressed belt of iron ore since like maybe the very beginning of this level. This is good. Oh man, I haven't seen a healthy iron ore like this in forever. This makes me feel so much happier. Okay, so um, I do need to worry about getting automated fuel over here to this locomotive though, because the solid fuel won't last forever. One thing I can do is add in another little bit of a coal line. In fact, uh, we'll have this split off here and kind of go back on itself. We'll have it snake around so I can still add some more miners over there. We'll extend this. We'll do another underground belt and there we go. We'll have coal that can feed into this wagon here. Well, we made it back to the outpost and back again. You can see from this little health bar here that biters are a problem over there now as well. Even though that the walls are now fully enclosing the iron ore outpost, it is getting attacked. So now it's even more important to use the iron ore that we're getting produced into some militarization. So I'm actually going to put in another set of inserters that will have, uh, I guess, go into some boxes. Um, I will grab some steel 
to make some steel boxes, I suppose. And thankfully I have a bunch of steel built up. So from these steel boxes, which provide just a little bit of a buffer, we can go ahead and put those there. Um, this one, there's sadly not room for it. Actually, there's not there either. Um, but we'll have room here. We can add another box there. And then we can figure out a way to add in maybe like another row of smelters over there or something like that. That would be very nice, to be honest. So now we have twice the speed for unloading ore. And then we can use some undergrounds that I don't have on me, but that we'll get from over here. And it turns out I have 50 of those, but those are pretty expensive. So I'm just gonna grab the yellow undergrounds and we'll do a little uh, extra smelting setup just below here, I think. In fact, maybe we'll put it here where the spaceship is. Yeah, even better idea. We'll do a red underground belt. Whoops. Right there. And then we'll join them up like this. Perfect. So now all we have to do is automate some stone furnaces, which will not be too big of a deal because I have some stone right here. Uh, actually, it kind of is a big deal. I don't have a whole lot of room, do I? Uh, what we could do, let's add in some more miners. So let's collect some more iron plate, which we have much more readily available now, which is fantastic. Make a couple miners. In fact, that would be something nice to also equally get automated eventually. So I'm gonna put an assembler right here, just across from this little gap where we have some stone ore and we'll add in some power and we'll make this an assembler uh, that will produce some stone furnaces. We'll just need an output, which we can do there into a little box. We'll just do a wooden one, cap it off at one stack, put in the recipe and there we go. What we can do is um, ghost down kind of the layout that I plan on having. So let's do, I think a row um, on either side. So we'll do, oops, I'm getting attacked somewhere. Oh, over there, I think it's okay. Um, we'll do one lane down there and then we'll do one lane on the opposite side and then we'll have the products kind of join up in the middle. All right, my new smelter is done and we're getting really close to finishing the automated rail transportation research. Uh, so now that we have a brand new iron plate line, what I want to do is join it up with this uh, kind of main bus line for iron plate over there. Uh, so we could just split it off so half of it can come up here and kind of join up, if that makes any sense. In fact, let's uh, loop this around a little bit earlier. Let's do it right here. This will go underground like that, and then we'll have it join up with the splitter. Whoops, we'll have to underground there as well so we don't get some joining of materials that shouldn't be there. But just like that, and that way we can have much more iron going into production of the uh, green circuits down here, as well as uh, the other part of the iron feeding into the main bus spot over here. The other thing we can do with this line is join it maybe a little bit further down over here to these parts that just aren't having the iron make it. Ooh, and we just got the automated rail transportation finished. Uh, my engineer says, it is time to repair the railway and access the distant mines. Um, hate to break it to you, engineer, but I've already done that, which is fine. All right, now that I've joined up more iron plate to feed into our bus, we can go about researching and automating more things. Uh, for automation, I think we should actually do landfill next because it would be nice to get a little bit of landfill just right there. Uh, but the other things I wanna definitely automate now, now that I have more iron and definitely more of a biter problem is the ammo. So uh, we could do piercing rounds, but that does require steel. So I think for steel, I'm eventually gonna snake it around here. It would be easier to do that if I had uh, landfill, but let's see if I can do it without. Uh, we'll just use some underground belts, move that over. Whew, we are conveniently just barely fitting it. 
but this is actually perfect. So we have steel on this line. We have our other main resources of copper, iron plate, and then green circuits on this line. So we're in pretty good shape actually. My engineer says, all right, I have the railway delivery set up. Yes, I do. That means I can really start to ramp up my production. Yes, that is something I'm already trying to do. I'm way ahead of the game, it looks like. However, the natives in this area are growing increasingly hostile. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Pointing out the obvious, it looks like. I should gather what I can in my car, then try to find somewhere safe to set up a more permanent base. Oh no, okay. So, supplies I need to gather for my car. 200 piercing rounds, 200 steel plate, 250 iron gear wheels, 500 electronic circuits, and 200 solar panels. Okay, so solar panels I don't even yet have researched, so I'm gonna have to do that. Um, let's finish focusing though on just automated assembly production. Actually, you know, I probably don't need that. Let's do the ammo instead. So we will want normal rounds, which is gonna be here. And uh, let's, actually, I can move that rail. So let's move that, okay. Because I may still yet have to put in a copper train over there. So I'm trying to see if we can avoid that. Um, but for now, I wanna make this regular ammo. And regular ammo just takes iron plate. So that's not a big deal. Um, and then we'll have these rounds go into producing uh, the piercing ammo. And piercing ammo takes steel, which I have here, if you guys remember. So let's turn these assemblers into normal ammo and you can see I'm still have, oh gosh, a major biter problem. As I speak, let's grab those gun turrets that I have on hand. Oh, they're taking out my power. We'll put these down right away. Put in the ammo. Oh my gosh. Okay, fighters taken care of. They sure ate a chunk of my base though. Okay, even more reason to hurry up on that ammo production. Unfortunately, the biters took out my one laser turret that I had in this area, um, but we'll replace it with normal turrets. The problem is I don't have any way to feed them yet. Oh no, pick up the ammo. Oh no, I don't wanna die. Thankfully, I remembered I had those defender bots. Whew. Okay, close call. All right, let's finish working on ammo. So we have our um, normal rounds here. Let's continue this just to make it a little bit quicker. We'll add in some power. And then uh, the piercing rounds take copper, steel, and then the normal magazines. So we'll have those go there. Actually, let's move it down a tile. Put the recipes back in. Move that down. Add in power. And then actually what I could do is put the output on the other side of the belt. So that way ammo um, can get automated and go to some turrets and stuff like that. And they will share both sides of the belt. Ooh, and landfill's done. Oh, I'm getting attacked over here now. Let's grab up this ammo. Let's see if we can go kill him by hand. Ooh, they're so fast. But with landfill done, let's do um, some military stuff next. No, let's do the solar panels next because we'll wanna start um, to figure out how to automate those in just a minute. Um, but I think we have a lot of the materials that we'll need for it nearby. We've got the steel nearby, we've got green circuits nearby and stuff like that. Um, so actually let's move this steel uh, belt around here like so. Um, and actually probably same with the copper. Uh, we'll split off some copper if I can get some splitters. Some of those there. Like that. Um, let's actually carry that belt 
down there. That way we have plenty of room for the copper and iron plate belt to go over here. Perfect. After however long, we finally have ammo up and running and automated. So the next thing I wanna do is grab some more belt because now I wanna start feeding it into some turrets uh, to start better defending the base against the constant biter attacks I'm now getting. And now I'm just extending some belts that are gonna go uh, along the perimeter of the base. And then from there, we can add some gun turrets that will feed from the belts. And that way, defense is essentially automated at that point. Woohoo, solar energy is finally done researching. That took quite a while. Uh, but that means we can now worry about automating it. And I think that means I'm gonna have to get a copper train up and running. And that means I have to automate rail production or the tracks. So I still have quite a few things I've got to do, uh, but I do at least have more of a defense available. Um, I've set up a perimeter of uh, belts here that kind of go along in a circle around the base. They end about here. I've got another turret up there just for good measure, just in case any biters come in from that direction. And then an another wall here at the bottom. So I definitely have a little bit more defense than I did at least, you know, a couple minutes ago, but we still have so much to do. So solar panels, to remind myself, those take copper plate, steel, and electronic circuits. So steel I'm doing okay on, at least for now, um, but this is my sole copper mining here. So yes, indeed, I think I do need to get that um, up and running for a train to actually go get some more copper ore. And as rich as I was feeling a couple minutes ago with my iron ore coming in, you can see it's slowed down a bit just because production has amped up. So actually I need to fix and put a box there. There we go, that will help a little bit. Okay, so stone, let's figure out a way to wrap it around. Um, actually, let's just bring it up over here. All right, so first thing we need, let's add in assembler to make uh, the sticks which come from iron plate. So we'll do that there to make sticks. And then the rail machine will go right here. So this needs sticks, steel, and stone. So let's actually move that over a tile. So the stone, actually, it'd be nice to have the steel and the stone on the same line. So we'll wrap the uh, steel over here. We'll have it join up with the stone some way. Maybe getting rid of that coal line there. We can join these and now we have stone and steel on the same line. Let's add in some power here. We'll put in the recipe and voila. Now we'll just put in a box, wait for it to build up. Let's cap it off at I think 200 for now. And then uh, we'll finish adding in that a uh, copper line that I ripped up to uh, make that iron train line a while back. Uh, but once we can get a healthier supply of copper plate coming in, then, uh, then we can start automating the solar panels. In the meantime, I'm trying to slowly work up on uh, building up my piercing ammo rounds. I've got a little box over here. I've got 90, so I'm almost halfway to that uh, point there. Steel I've got plenty of, iron gear wheels I don't think will be a problem, although what I could do is put in a filter inserter from the iron gear wheel line uh, here. Actually, I shouldn't need one, a filter inserter. I can just do a regular inserter. We'll put it into a box right there, cap it off at 250, which I think is five stacks worth right there. And then I can do the same for some green circuits. We'll just siphon off a little bit. And that way um, we have these slowly building up over time. I've got plenty of rails on me now. So now I just have to fill in what I previously deleted. In fact, um, I am gonna have to worry about getting an underground belt here for my ammo line. So let me borrow the red underground belt since we have a little bit longer coverage. We'll move that. Uh, we'll place the rails here. And uh, let's try to get it to meet up with where it originally dent, where it originally met with. So, hmm. 
Looks like it's gonna be over by just a tile or so, which is not a big deal. It should still be able to line up. While I finish adding in the train tracks that are gonna be going from the main base area to the copper farming section, now I just have to add in the train. So I've got that already crafted. I just have to add in the parts. I've got one locomotive headed in the upward direction. I'm gonna add in two cargo wagons in the middle. And then we're gonna add in another locomotive in the opposite direction and that way it can also go both ways uh, to and from the base. So we're gonna set the train conditions. We're gonna have it go to copper drop off and wait until it has an empty cargo. And then we're gonna have it go to the copper mining area. And again, we're gonna have it wait until a full cargo inventory or five seconds of inactivity. So it's all set. Let's go in and we'll head on down. And we made it. Let's put that radar down here so we can see what's going on. We'll um, finish adding in these inserters. We've got to add in a couple more boxes too. Looks like I need some more steel. Uh, but I can do some iron boxes in the meantime. Much better. So now that we have both copper and iron production increased, we can now worry about automating those solar panels. So solar panels again take five copper plate, five steel plate, and 15 electronic circuits. So we have conveniently all of those right here. Um, in fact, we can either bring the steel over to this line or uh, bring the green circuits over here. In fact, I think that's what we'll do instead. We'll bring the green circuits just looping around this way. So it kind of um, will wrap around like so. We'll grab a red underground belt and this will have to go up to make room for the new underground belt here. Okay, but now we almost have an additional section of the bus going this way. So let's see, it would be nice to have assembler twos for this, but I'll just go ahead and grab a couple more assembler ones. Um, okay, so solar panels. Let's grab, let's actually move this. So um, just to make room so we have enough leverage for a long-handed inserter to fit in the middle. We'll have to do inserters here and here. We can extend this down, extend that down. We'll put our assemblers right next to those inserters like this. We'll put in the recipe, copy that. And so we have the copper, we've got the steel. We just have to add in the inserters like this. Let's add in another inserter there. Add in some power, which means we need some power poles, which means we need to farm some trees. There we go. And the last thing we need is an output line, which we can do with red inserters here. There we go. And actually let's switch the direction so it's going up like that. We'll do the inserters for the green circuits like this. Uh, would be nice to have some turrets like here and here, just with some ammo that we can manually feed into it just to be on the safe side since it's so next to our walls. We'll finish adding in the power and then we'll officially have solar panels automated. I'm running low on iron ore yet again, so I've added in an additional iron ore patch just over here, it's just kind of the beginnings of it. So I've got some things I need to improve in this section over here, like adding in additional miners and some additional turrets for defense and a radar and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm hoping that will help to increase my iron ore throughput so that I can actually get some more iron plate throughput, which is pretty well starved of the base at this point. So I'm hoping we can get a little bit more of that. I just need a little bit more iron plate so I can make an additional cargo wagon, which I am just one iron plate shy. So now we can go ahead and do that. And then once this train leaves, I will basically put another version of it down here. And I've already added in this bifurcation here where we're gonna have um, the same set of tracks here that go to the original iron ore outpost, but then I've added in an extra track here that it kind of diverges and then it joins up again to share the copper ore train and then it diverges again over here. 
And I've also added in some signaling because now that we have multiple trains sharing the same track and they're going in the same or different directions at some points, I've had to add in some signals. So instead of discussing signaling here though, go ahead and check out my train signal tutorial. Uh, but basically you do have to plan on having signals if you are gonna be sharing the same set of tracks like I am doing here. So this train I think should be leaving here any minute now. In fact, actually let's just send it on its way to go back to the iron ore mine. And instead, we'll go ahead and place down my new train. It looks like I am missing a signal because unfortunately my train isn't moving to my new outpost, but I imagine I already know which signal it is. It is this one, a rail signal that needs to go opposite of it. So I have to walk all the way down there, but then I should be able to meet up with the train on the way back. There we go, is the train gonna move now? Yes, it is. Good. With the addition of the second iron ore mining area, iron ore and iron plate in general is looking much healthier. In fact, the base is looking not so bad at this point. I've got a decent supply of ammo coming in through my uh, perimeter belts here. Um, they're pretty much full all the way up here. So they're beginning to get full and uh, that's making me feel a lot more safe. And actually, during one of my trips to the outpost, I did notice this cool little abandoned area over here. So I'm wondering if once we get this objective done, we have to go up there, which reminds me, maybe we should actually start getting some of our materials into our car here. So I've been kind of holding out for some time, waiting for my resources to build up, but we could um, go ahead and now put, ooh, there's actually already things already in there. Um, the little bit of ammo I've got on me, we can do some steel. Um, iron gear wheels, we'll need to, um, I don't think we have a box for that yet, do we? Oh no, we do. I was smart and thought ahead. Okay, so we need 250 iron gear wheels. In fact, now we'll just go ahead and get rid of that box. We need 200 steel plate. So I'm gonna um, recap that. We need 500 green circuits, which I should have right here. Very good. And then the only thing I'm not sure that we have are uh, the solar panels, which are over here. In fact, uh, let's take a look. Oh, we're close. We have about 150. So we'll go ahead and take what we currently have. We'll put it in the car and that way we can keep track of uh, everything we've gathered so far. Okay. Four of the five material conditions are met. The only thing we're lacking in are the solar panels. So at this point, it's just a waiting game, waiting for these solar panels to build up. Okay, moment of truth. We only need 21 more solar panels. Do we have them? We do, oh my gosh, okay. Just in the nick of time. All right, let's put these in the car and that should be the last ingredient we needed stored in here. So that mini objective is complete. Now what is the game gonna have us do? My engineer says I am ready to go. I would agree. Congratulations, you have reached the end of the tutorial and that means we've reached the end of level number five and the end of this 1.0 tutorial series. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys, but I promise there will be more Factorio content to come. As always, thank you guys for joining me and I will see you for some new Factorio content very soon. So the question is, what is all the way up there? I must know. Ah, let's take my car. I don't even have the lag to blame. Oh no, this one biter is gonna get me. Trees are going to kill me. Okay, we are almost there. Almost there. What's over here? Ooh. What is over here? We've got some steel and some belts and a lot of wood. Oh man, modules are over here. Wow. 
If only I had known earlier. Electric furnaces too. Oh boy. Oh well.